Hello again guys, how is it going? It is Fake Hero coming at you with a new Legends of Runeterra video and today we are going to be breaking down the best decks to reach Masters in January in Legends of Runeterra. There's going to be a wide selection of decks here, so depending on your uh, collection of cards, hopefully one of these decks is easy for you to build towards for any newer players or for any more uh, veteran players. This is going to be a good selection of decks I would recommend if you want to reach that Masters and start qualifying for those seasonal tournaments. I know these decks are good and these are the ones I will recommend. Uh, let's break them down. So firstly, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Strictly for any newer players who are just getting into the game, it's important to understand you know, the top deck of the meta. It is the Gohard deck. You may or may not have heard about it. It is top tier, pretty much what the meta is revolving around. Uh, the meta is defined by this deck, which is going to be Gohard. Gohard is simply a card that, um, as you play it, it gets stronger and stronger. You shuffle copies into your deck. Uh, at first, you drain one, deal, uh, deal one to a unit, shuffle copies into your deck. As you shuffle copies into your deck and play more, after you've played three, you'll get the pack of your bags, which will deal five to all enemies for one mana, which is pretty ridiculous. That's a massive tempo swing for this deck. And a lot of the time, uh, as you start to get the pack of your bags, that's how you'll be winning the game. So the deck pretty much revolves around uh, lots of cycle, uh, lots of cheap early game plays just so you can flood the board early and then you uh, uh, gradually get towards pack your bags and kind of close out many matchups. Now other than Gohard, the other deck I would actually recommend the most, especially if you don't want to play Gohard, is actually going to be Draven Ezreal. It's going to be more Pagdorp's uh, version. A lot of the lists are pretty standard. There might be one or two cards different. Uh, this is a pretty globally good list and it's probably the one i am going to recommend right now this is a pretty easy control deck to play it's a fantastic deck and i think because of its uh matchup against gohard where it's 50 50 it's an acceptable deck to consider climbing all the way to masters with uh, it's very easy to play surprisingly after having about 20 or so games with it i realized this deck is not too hard to play you pretty much play some stuff on curve you kind of pass against your opponent when you can force them to be playing stuff because your deck's really good at reacting to any plays your opponent makes so it makes it really easy for you the person piling draven ezreal to punish your opponent um other than that if you're not too sure about like what to be doing you've kind of just got some decent on curve plays like you play ballistic bot early you start to generate lots of value uh, you play draven early it starts to generate more value and pressure your opponent you've got some pretty decent mid-range units as well so you kind of play on curve you pressure your opponent a bit you remove their stuff with some really cheap removal and then you kind of get towards the late game where you have captain farron to kind of over the top your opponent and become the ultimate late game control finisher now other than that another important thing to note here is try beam and populator it's a fantastic card kind of makes the deck it is what it is with this card as well massive highlight basically every time you play a three cost card you're going to be buffing this to deal one more damage and summon a one cost more follower a very fantastic card for this list really good control tool now we've gone over gohard and draven ezreal the two decks i believe to kind of dominate the metagame mostly and the ones i would generally recommend for anybody really trying to climb the rest of the decks i'm going to mention are just going to be kind of like in no particular order a wide range of decks here any of which i would still recommend for climbing just as much some of these will be a bit better than others but depending on your play style you might find that one suits you better and you'll be able to climb just as effectively uh, with it anyway and i guess the first list i would like to go over is actually going to be what might be considered also top of the meta game but you know, i'm still kind of yet to be convinced about it because it's a little bit of a newer archetype um, is going to be an Aurelian Soul deck, specifically Aurelian Soul and Zoe, but there's a few different variants. There's like an Aurelian Soul and Leona, Aurelian Soul and Zoe, uh, Aurelian Soul and Garen, but it's all kind of the same thing. This is a very powerful mid-range deck that relies on units to kind of carry the game because you have like lots of powerful cards that uh, use your units to strike your opponent's stuff and then kind of sustain the board that way and then we have the most recent addition of grand plaza which kind of turns all of your units into removal because you get that plus one plus one buff and challenger on everything which goes along really well with these powerful uh, beefy units uh, to pretty much just be obnoxious to your opponent uh, grand plaza seems like a very overtuned card uh, which kind of suits this deck and then kind of the most recent addition is going to be Zoe. I like uh, BBG's take on the Zoe pick because it kind of like gives you a pretty ridiculous early game. And if Zoe's unchecked, 
then uh, you're gonna get generate a ton of value and then if it is checked well you know you've still got plenty of late game value a really soul pretty much if it gets into the field unchecked and you manage to get that level up condition you know most of the time you're just gonna win the game straight off that outside of that you've got some pretty fantastic board clears uh, with judgment lots of healing with star shaping lots of value generating this is another very fantastic deck i think um takes a little bit more practice but one that can be just as rewarding maybe just as much as gohard and draven ezreal uh, for climbing to masters with uh one of the most recent kind of comebacks is going to be fiora shen now swim and kuvira have been spending quite some time recently uh innovating the list and pushing it forward to end up where it is at the moment now fiora shen personally isn't a deck I am too comfortable talking about into too much detail, but I will say it is a good deck and it's one that you can climb with if you get used to it. If you're looking for some more in-depth guides on Fiora Shen, maybe head over to Swim's channel or just kind of like Google, uh, see who else has been making some Shen guides. But this is the most recent addition. They've been kind of, kind of going for a little bit more value with the Egghead Researcher, which is just generating more dragons and making this deck just the ability for it to go later even more ridiculous a couple of spirits refuge is becoming kind of like the newer trends as of recently because i guess i guess healing is really good and there's like a lauren blade keeper here but i don't know how necessary that is if you don't have lauren blade keeper you can consider putting in another concerted strike or even another dragon guard lieutenant if you like outside of that pretty strong mid-range deck it's got a little bit more control uh, cards in it because we splash that Ionia accessing us River Shaper Deny and Nopify to kind of blow out Go Hard like this deck can just beat Go Hard if you Nopify their early game uh, packy bags etc and then just kind of become really obnoxious when anybody is not aware with Fiora Fiora has an inbuilt kind of Exodia effect so if you've kind of killed enough of your opponent's units uh, Fiora can win the game so she becomes kind of like a play onto the field consider protecting her if it doesn't work out with Fiora you've got some pretty good late game mid-range threats now if you guys want like a really simple deck to play something kind of like really uh beginner friendly let's go over scouts grand plaza uh this was scouts has been a pretty popular archetype for the longest time it's been in most meta games and it's been relevant this is like literally the definition of play your units on curve and then kind of just slap your opponent um there's a little bit of mechanics involved because we feature misfortune who is a very powerful win condition in this deck so kind of like protecting your misfortune generates you a ton of value and if unchecked misfortune will win you the game many times uh, with the most recent edition of grand plaza uh scouts has kind of turned from a mostly aggressive deck into a little bit more of a control deck uh control with a very like you know uh, linear uh, I don't really mean full control, but you get the ability to play a little bit more slow with this deck now and generate value. And this is going to be the Misfortune Garen version. You could also go for a Misfortune Quinn version, but Garen kind of just is a bit more uh, beginner friendly. And I think a lot more players will have access to Garen early. So uh, you can play a list with Garen. You don't need three Garens at first. It's important that you have three Misfortunes. Um, but three Garens is fantastic. Alternatively, you can go for the Quinn version. Both are fantastic. I think the Garen and Misfortune version is really cool at the moment. Plus having that Tiana Crown Guard on the top end just to make your deck go later and later. Plenty of rallying effects so you'll be able to attack multiple times in a turn. And it just, it's a crazy deck. Um, it's, it's so simple to play and it can be very rewarding and get you to Masters pretty quickly. The next, deck we're going to, the next deck we're going to go over is going to be Feel the Rush. Feel the Rush is a big ramp deck, super late game bomb. It's revolved around Feel the Rush for any newer players. So this will summon two different random champions from your hand and deck and raise their stats to 10-10, uh, which goes along really well with units such as uh, Trindamir and Trundle, both of which who become crazy. Uh, when they come out as 10-10s because a flip trundle especially has overwhelm and so does Trindamir and those stats can pretty much just blow up your opponent. This deck is just control the field, sustain, pass by time, get to the late game, play your big game threats, slap your opponent. Um, you can play atrocity to kind of deal damage to them over the top. And then against a lot of aggro and faster decks, sometimes you can just 
uh, demolish the early game board and make them surrender anyway. Um, typically, we're not seeing as much aggro aggro as we did once as we once did. So this is kind of more. Uh, it's not as well catered for the meta, but it's definitely still still a very powerful deck. And for whatever reason you do bump into an aggro deck, it's pretty much an auto win. It's also fantastic, most importantly, against Gohard because they just like you just remove all their units because Gohard needs to get like chip damage with their units plus pack your bags to kind of win. But they um, do sometimes tech Commander Lidros as well on the Gohard deck which can sometimes allow them win, but you're generally a lot faster than they are. Gohard can be a little bit slow when it comes to playing the pack your bags. And this is a deck that if given enough time, will just kind of win. Alrighty, let's talk about Soraka Tam Kench. It's actually a deck I would be recommending for players to use to reach masters because one of the reasons has been uh, it has a fantastic time against Gohard. Other than that, it's a deck that if it draws well, it wins hard. Uh, basically, it's a deck that revolves around Soraka and uh, Tom Kench, both of which are very strong control tools. Tom Kench allows you to kind of like devour your opponent's units over and over, and then you just protect Tom Kench and heal him up, and then just get a, generate a ton of value and make your opponent concede because they're getting tilted. Soraka kind of like heals all your allies, and as you um, continue to heal them, you'll flip Soraka. As you keep healing stuff, you'll keep drawing cards and generating tons of value. You also have Star Spring, which synergizes very well with the rest of the deck and becomes a very powerful win condition in itself because it has that strong wording of win the game. You've healed enough on your damaged units, you will win the game. This is pretty much a uh, deck that's revolved around a bunch of damaged units, a bunch of like high HP stuff. Keep slapping into your opponent, healing your stuff. It's going to make it a little bit awkward for your opponent um, as you start to establish multiple threats too, which if this deck ever does do, where you get Star Spring into Soraka into Tom Kench, it makes it very difficult for any deck to be able to deal with that much pressure. Now, this deck does struggle against Feel the Rush, which is not as common, but if you're not facing many ramp decks, I think Soraka Tom Kench is a fantastic deck for also climbing with. And the last deck I'm going to talk about today, kind of like a bonus deck, but I think it's a, actually a really fantastic deck and it's definitely the most awesome list. Is that the right word? Awesome. Unique list. It's a deck that uh, my friend Faint used to reach Masters with this season. It's going to be a Fizz and Teemo elusive kind of like combo aggro deck. It's mostly an aggro deck, but uh, basically play some spells, play some early game units, smock your opponent with elusive threats, elusive meaning that only elusive units can block this, and then burn your opponent down. Really fast, quick games, uh, probably the, uh, it's probably the best aggro deck I would say you could, you could consider playing, like if we're talking about just strictly aggro, like kind of like slap your opponent and their life quickly. Uh, but the most recent addition of Wiggly Burblefish Reduce my cost by one for each spell you've cast this game. Kind of allows you to eventually have a kind of combo turn where you play a bunch of these. Sometimes you can even slap a mind meld over it, which will increase their allies power and health, depending on how many spells you've had. But it kind of like, you can play a little bit passive and look for a big swing turn. You can also in some matchups just play on curve and then smock your opponent. Uh, with the inclusion of suit up, it does allow you to kind of skip some of those heavy removal tools that would most of the time blow out a lot of aggro decks, but I think suit up is kind of very necessary for sustaining through those pings and those like avalanches and withering whales. The list goes on and on. Pick a card's fanta fantastic for kind of like refilling your hand very, very quickly. A little bit of cool tricks you can do with this deck. Definitely a lot of fun, and it's actually one I would recommend for reaching Masters with.